Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like these that have been previously polished multiple times and do some real headlight restoration like this. A true headlight restoration with a better finished product that looks better, lasts longer. Super legit. It's just amazing. Stay tuned. Let's get down to business. Okay, as I stated, uh, this is about polishing headlights too. Uh, I did a previous video about polishing headlights. This is another headlight that I've came across. Uh, you see these bars here and these uh, curls and all this stuff here. Uh, this is from previous multiple polishes. Uh, see how there's rings? Uh, these rings would not be present after polishing. Yeah, they would be transparent, but when the stuff starts coming back and starts breaking down weeks later, uh, months or weeks later, um, you will start seeing stuff like this uh, take place. And let me explain to you why that is. Okay, so when somebody polishes this headlight, like I got a conf confirmation that this was going on, and this is a Honda Pilot, okay? Uh, this person had owned this Honda Pilot uh, for about uh, 10 years or not, which is a 2012 Honda Pilot. Um, so uh, what has been going on is uh, they have been taking this Honda Pilot back to Honda and an actual Honda dealership, Honda certified dealership that sells Hondas, okay? And they uh, repeatedly have done um, what they were telling her was headlight restoration about every other year. Uh, so she's had it done about four or five times and it just comes back super quick and she's just tired of it until she can't see anymore. And... Um, uh, I know this because I asked her about these rings and how long she's had this vehicle. Once I see stuff like this, I start asking questions. Uh, I'm going to start with the 320 here because uh, this light is pretty embedded with the uh, wax residue uh, left behind from the polishing or multiple polishes. And uh, once I start seeing those rings like I showed you that are here, um, I start asking questions so they know what's going on and um, what I'll have to do to get these headlights into tip-top shape. Okay, so there's two major things that causes these rings and causes the degradation of the headlight to just keep going on worse. And why I'm using a 320 and why it's always harder um, to remove... Uh, the surface of the headlight when people are doing polishing or multiple levels of polishing, okay? So basically there's a bunch of thick embedded residue on top of uh, the headlight or uh, embedded into the surface of the headlight because when you look at a headlight under a microscope uh, most polycarbonates either resemble a sponge uh, it has pores, uh, you know, uh, uh, pockets and pores and stuff into it, it's a real porous environment, more closer to a coral, uh, like a like a coral reef or a sponge uh, than what people would think, like a glass underneath uh, the surface. Uh, polycarbonate is not like glass or any other uh, smooth surface. It's different when it is naked. That means no sealant left on it. So. Um, you know, it either looks like that or it looks like a uh, blanket, like a uh, woven blanket or a sewed together blanket or like a, like a handmade blanket, okay, stitch blanket, whatnot. Um, you know, uh, it looks like that. And when people continuously polish the lights, what is happening is uh, those those polishes are going into those um caverns and into those pockets and they're drying out sooner or later at first um you know they make the headlight they pretty much um in a sense bleach the headlight they bleach they don't remove um you know enough or a sufficient amount of the surface residue okay when you're sanding you're removing it all okay when you're polishing and you're doing a minute very very minute uh, removal, but it's not actually getting removed. It's like 1%, 5%, something really low getting removed. What's going on is it's kind of a heat bleaching, um, if not a um, kind of, when I say heat, I mean friction, okay? 
friction causes heat on the surface when you're using any kind of polisher, primarily um, any kind of polisher, any kind of uh, a material on material uh, that's moving with a polisher, a DA, a orbital polisher, or whatever um, you're using, okay? You're, you're causing some kind of friction with that light with the polishing agent, okay? So it kind of does kind of a bleaching um, type thing to the cells of the uh, surface of the polycarbonate, okay? It's not removing anything, really, all right? So what happens with these rings here, and these rings uh, is pretty much that little minuteness that is being removed, okay? Plus the polish is kind of gumming up and embedding itself um, you know, if you've ever polished and you've had a lot of polish on you using high heat or high polishing, you know that it gums up a little bit. And um, on a smooth surface, that's no problem. You just keep going or you wipe it off. But when you're dealing with the porous substance, what happens is it gums up and it stays there. Okay, even if you wipe it off, it kind of makes these lines and creates these lines, okay, uh, and in these divots or whatever. Now, when you are finished polishing these lights when they're finished polishing these lights the the lines are probably very minute but in a week or two they started being more prominent and as the time goes on the lines are being more prominent where it looks like there's waves on the uh, headlight like if I touch the headlight it seems smooth right I mean it's rough because it's all beat up there's no there's no uh, clear coat left on it but it's 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 smooth but when you rub your fingers over those spots, you can feel those spots. Now, as you see, they're still there right here. Uh, I had to do a considerable amount of removal because this headlight has been um, polished multiple times. You see right there, I can still feel them. Uh, and this is with the 320, okay? This is a, a heavy removal because I know there's so much on there. So it's a composite of a little bit of surface material that was removed that was yellow in the first place and the polish, whichever polish they used, um, you know, lumping up in one spot. That's why they have these big uh, flush lines because they probably used a pad that was too big or they used a six inch buffer or something like that, which uh, believe it or not has uh, drastically different effects on the headlight. Uh, not going into all that, but three inch is idea. Even if you have a bigger headlight like this, you don't want to um, start going into big um, polishers. And you see this uh, consistently with people who polish headlights because they don't really know the science behind it. Um, but, uh, you know, they'll have this big giant eight inch pad on a headlight and stuff and they're not even taping off and, and you know, it's like, what's going on with the paint around it? Oh, it's just, po no, it's not just polish because, you, you know, you, you polish can run dry, you can burn up that paint and, you know, you have lumps like this and it's like, how are you efficiently getting in there polishing? You're really That's not. That's like bringing and a grenade look good to kill a second, spider in your house. Out. It's better than using bug spray and toothpaste, yes, okay. Don't get me wrong, but it just has no place in an actual... It should never actually be called headlight restoration. It should be called polishing headlights. If anybody... I always tell everybody that if they ever say they did headlight restoration and they polish your headlights, they lie to you. Polishing headlights is not headlight restoration. It does not constitute... It's not a true headlight restoration. It does not um, constitute in any way, shape, or form a headlight restoration. With that being said... When they keep polishing these headlights, it just uh, adds layers and layers and layers of the stuff uh, pretty much on top of the surface of the headlight. And then, like I said, embed it into the headlight. Now, just imagine, people like to think of this as I'm polishing a flat surface, like if I'm polishing my um, clear coat out on my vehicle, or I'm polishing a mirror, or I'm polishing a, you know, a piece of chrome or something, it's totally different. Okay, all those substances, yes, they are um, under the microscope. They they have cracks and and um, you know um, a very minute porousness amount to it, and that's why they go from being dull to shiny. There's defects on the surface, but with uh, polycarbonate or plastic polishing, it's it's closer to like wood. 
Okay, how wood is really rough and porous. It's closer to that, believe it or not, under the microscope. It is really vastly rough. So it's a different ball game. You have to treat it differently. Um, and I say it's a scam because a lot of people will know it, it, you know, there's a difference and they'll try to play it off because they're lazy or they're trying to come up on some money or they're, um, they, you know, or the other one, the other aspect of it, which I would like to, um, you know, shed light on that for people, um, you know, is they just ignorant to the fact that it's not headlight restoration and it doesn't constitute a headlight restoration. Um, you know, it's not going to last as long and it's not in the same boat. Um, it's like apples to oranges. It's totally different. It's a totally different animal. Now, just imagine, um, with that poor surface, you know, if you could, uh, just think of something on a grander scale, like you said, like a, um, a sponge or whatever. And, you know, I'm polishing out that sponge. What's going on? Yeah, that's why it's called a sponge. It has all these pores in it and it soaks stuff up. So that's what the surface looks like. So it's soaking up whatever you're putting on there. And, um, you know, what they're putting on there has very minimum UV protection, if any. Um, it's leaving pretty much naked and exposed um, polycarbonate surface or headlight surface. Not only that is when um, it goes bad, what's going on is it dries up. And then the protection dries up when it dries up on the headlight. And then the headlight starts degrading and going bad again. Not only does um, the, um, you know, the clearness, you know, start going bad or the headlights start going bad, the headlight is actually still bad, believe it or not. Like I said, remember how I said what's happening is more of a friction or chemical bleaching, okay, of the headlight. It's changing, um, you know, the diameter, the, it's, cha it's changing the dynamic of the headlight, um, uh, cells, okay, it's changing um, pretty much them from clear, you know, or excuse me, from like that yellow dingy looking or white uh, dingy looking, and it's kind of um, bleaching them through heat and polish, okay, uh, in a sense, not chemical bleaching, but like um, uh, more of a, like a heat bleaching, okay, so what's going on is they're still damaged. They still have been changed color at one point in time. So what goes on is they're, because they're damaged and they're, you know, they're, the, the, the tracks have already been laid to the damage and it's just been kind of, um, treated. It comes right back. It comes back faster. And every time you polish it out, it comes back faster and faster. If you did a test and you polished a light, to clear and you had it out in the sun and the weather excuse me there uh that jump right there i had some camel uh camera difficulties there and um you missed out on the 3000 um polishing step okay that's the only thing you missed out is the 3000 polishing step um with the p uh, the p3000 uh trizac pad okay um but anyways um because the tracks are already laid and the damage is already there and it was kind of uh, chemically bleached, it comes right back. Or not chemically bleached, but heat bleached and friction bleached, it comes right back faster and faster. Like I said, if you had, um, you know, I haven't had, I don't have time to do this test, but if you, because I mean, I don't approve of polishing headlights, it means um, it's not... It's not proper. It's a whole different category than what I do. I do headlight restoration. Um, but if you did a test and you polished a headlight and then you put it out in the sun and you timed how bad, you know, how long it takes to get this bad or how long it takes to get to a certain level of bad you, and you polish it and you put it back out there, you're going to hit the bad point again way faster. And then if you polish it again and put it out there, you're going to cut that time in half and over and over and over until you get to a point where, like she did, she tried to take it into the um, uh, Honda dealership again. And they told her it's too far bad. You're going to have to get new headlights or you're going to have to get a um, like an actual headlight restoration. And that's when she was like, wait, what the hell? You guys are telling me this is a headlight restoration. What is it that you did? Oh, um, you know, we polished them out. We don't really do the he real headlight restoration here. And she was like, you know, there's a big issue. She was like, you guys told me that this was headlight restoration. This is what I was getting. And you now you're telling me that all these, you know, these five, six years I've been bringing this here and you've been charging me. I get... 
you know, whatever the fuck you're saying I'm getting, I'm getting polished headlights, right? So, uh, it's a big issue. You gotta tell people what they're getting. And if you don't know, I mean, it's understandable, but, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta know. Just a disclaimer, because I had so many boneheads or un uneducated or unlistening or even some haters on the first uh, Polishing Headlight Was a Scam video saying, oh, he did all this stuff and then he polished the headlights. Okay, polishing headlights means that they only did this step here that I did. Okay, you see that little spot right there? Never be afraid of, um, you know, if you see something you don't like, you know, you can just do it over again. You don't have to do the whole light. Just do that spot. But anyways, polishing headlights refers to only polishing the headlights. That other step I just did before all this stuff. Just the polishing, okay? From the start. Generally, not even with an efficient polisher like this. They're using a big, giant polisher that you use to polish car panels with, which is just silly. It's not going to do, you know, much justice for the headlight. It might appear it does, but in the long run, it doesn't do shit. Okay, this little 7800 RPM with that, with, uh, you, you need more of a focused uh, you know, a focused RPM. You don't need no big giant. It makes a difference. Okay. It makes a difference, you know, big time when you change the diameter or something. You need something more focused like this to actually do a proper polish on a headlight. Okay. So that would be polishing headlights right there. That's all they were doing to our headlight. Okay. No matter how fucked up they are, they're like polishing a turd. Okay. You're polishing damage. That's what you're doing. You're not removing the damage. You're polishing damage. Now, what I would say is if you don't remove it, where's it at? Exactly. It's there. The damage is there. Yeah, you just masked it somehow. Um, so that's the difference, okay? That's only polishing highlights. What I'm doing here, polishing is one step when it's supposed to be. Okay? After the damage is removed and you built it back up a little bit, then you polish and then you seal okay you don't just polish i don't say look at this headlights look how ugly it is and orange i just polish it and there you go there's a here's, and you know it, oh it's clear yeah it might look clear but that don't do nothing it's gonna come back right away and then at the at, at, as a matter of fact it's gonna come back worse because now you have this polish residue which most people use the wrong stuff you know, and metal polish and, 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 you know, foot polish and so just weird stuff. And then they, um, it sits there on that headlight and it dehydrates and dries. And, uh, you know, the residue is baked onto the headlight and baked into the headlight. So now you have a worse problem where somebody has to charge you more to remove all this stuff to give you a proper headlight restoration. And that's why I say polishing is a scam, because some people use it as a scam, you know, and the headlight restoration is an up and coming, um, you know, it should have always been a huge major part of um, auto restoration or auto care. Um, but the science wasn't there before. Just uh, 10, 12 years ago, you had people at Walmart trying to scam people to uh, do, let me, you know, restore your headlights and pay me 30 bucks. You know what I'm saying? And it's just bullshit rubbing some WD 40 in your light or whatever. Now it's a real thing, okay? It's so important. It's the most needed thing in the auto industry. It's the most needed thing. Why? Because nobody really does it like this. Nobody, right? You can't just drive into a headlight restoration shop. No, it's, it's very rare. You know, uh, how many I can throw a rock, you know, in two directions, and I would hit 37 oil change places, 37 tire shops, right? <laughs> this is the most needed thing in the auto industry, okay? Uh, you know, about 99% of the vehicles on the road need headlight restoration. The other 1% will need headlight restoration or they're parked in the garage. All right. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe.